it's a really concerning report, and and, and you're right, it, it, it does cause a worry for us all. Um, I think what's really important here is that the government does give the Australian people a sense of confidence that, uh, firstly, these systems are being properly protected and that the uh, safety of people's information within those systems can be assured. Um, it, it, it is, it's, it's a very worrying report and, and precisely because of that, we need to hear an explanation from the government about uh, how they are maintaining this system in a way that can give us all a sense of confidence. Australia has been hesitant in the past to single out any country behind these attacks. We remember the attack on Parliament House's information systems and they would never name China, even though it was widely assumed that that was the source. Do you think Australia should be taking a firmer stance on singling out foreign actors behind these attacks? I, I think the reaction of our agencies is appropriate. Um, you know, it's obviously important not to be um, making allegations if you can't back those allegations up. And, and so I understand a degree of circumspection on the part of our agencies around where they ascribe blame. Um, and But ultimately what matters here is that we have a sense of confidence that these systems are secure and robust, that the government's taking every action that it can to make sure that that's the case and that it's explaining to the Australian people why we can have a sense of confidence in these systems. Now, if we can move on to the topic of submarines, we've seen in uh, Senate estimates that the estimate for the submarine program is now blown out to $80 billion. We're at a point in the contract where we could pull out and it would cost the Australian government around $140 million. Do you think that's something the government should be considering? Well, these are really important uh, capabilities. They're going to be really important assets. So uh, we need the future submarines. So let's be absolutely clear about that. Um, and what ought to drive our thinking around this is the strategic circumstances that our country faces. And as a result of COVID-19, that's just got a whole lot more complicated. And it was pretty complicated to start with. When my concern here is not so much that this program is happening because we need the assets, we desperately need the future submarines, but it's the fact that you know, we've seen since this government came to power, the time frame of this program slipped by 10 years in the last seven. Uh, that's an enormous concern. And whatever that meant prior to COVID-19, it's been magnified many times as a result of what COVID-19 does to the world that we now live in. Um, when you look at how much this is costing, that figure is going absolutely in the wrong direction. And when you look at the amount of Australian industry content on the submarines, uh, that seems to be going in the wrong direction as well. So what we actually need is to hear from the Defence Minister, to hear from the government about how this really important capability is going to be obviously delivered on budget, but delivered in a manner which is timely because we desperately need this capability. Isn't that the question, though? If you say, uh, as you do, that this is becoming increasingly urgent because of the coronavirus response and where it's left us in a global sense, not many people would disagree with you there, but we're decades off having any of these submarines online and the cost is enormous. Isn't there a value in pulling out of this contract and moving the production to Australia where you could get Australian jobs going, you could fund local industry and you could increase our capability potentially quicker? Well, well, Annalise, the idea was always that the production be done in Australia, that it be done in Adelaide. Um, you know, we've seen uh, coming out from uh, government reports over the last few months the prospect that uh, part of the whole fabrication is going to be done in France. Now, you know, in, in my view, that's that's a complete breach of faith with the people of Adelaide and the people of Australia uh, around how these submarines were going to be built. This was meant to be done in Australia, but. It would be a mistake to walk down a path which saw even further delay. Fundamentally, we've, we've got to have the future submarines and we've got to have them as soon as we possibly can. We've clearly got to have them um, in, in a manner which is on budget. Uh, all of those indicators are going in the wrong direction, which is why we actually need to hear from the Defence Minister about why this program, uh, how we can have confidence that this program is on track and on budget. But, you know, there is a deafening silence from the government at the moment, uh, and that's giving rise to an enormous amount of concern within the public, and rightly so. And when it comes to the administration of this contract, it is an enormous cost, over $80 billion. And now it's come out today that Naval Group has been paying its staff bonuses to help through this. This is a taxpayer-funded bonus for these staff. Do you think that's acceptable? Oh, look, ultimately, it's a matter for both Naval and the government to 
explain, but to be honest, I'm not about to criticise any company for uh, the way in which it pays its workforce in the midst of, of this crisis. Uh, I'm glad that they are paying their workforce is the, is, is the truth. And I don't think this is the, the main game. I, I think the main game here is to actually get uh, some word from the government about how we're going to get this capability back on track because uh, we need these and we need them to be built in Australia and we need those jobs coming uh, to Adelaide. Um, but more than anything, we need this capability in what is going to be an increasingly uncertain world and an uncertain world that is upon us far more quickly. And, and, and that's why it's so important that we get an explanation from the government uh, about where the whole submarine program is up to. I mean, it's, no one's going to disagree with you that it's good to keep people in work, but the idea to be paying out bonuses on a program that's over budget, over time and taxpayer funded, surely that's a hard sell to any member of the Australian public. Well, well I'm not making the sell. I, I think that is, a, as you say, a matter for both the government and Naval to, to explain it, but, but nor am I going to be in a position of, of criticising companies for uh, paying people at this moment in time. Um, I, I, but it is for the government and Naval to give an explanation of that, but, but it is a side issue. The, the, the main game here um, is the extraordinary uh, increase in cost that we've seen in relation to the program and the delays that we've seen in relation to the program and the complete failure on the government uh, to give the Australian public any sense of confidence that this program is on track when we desperately need this capability. I mean, there is no more important platform uh, for Australia's defence, for our national security, than the future submarines. It is the most expensive product that Australia has ever bought in any context since Federation. Um, we need to desperately hear from the government about how this program is going to be delivered on time, on budget, uh, because the fact of the matter is both those indicators are going in the wrong direction and going in the wrong direction fast.